Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back again today for another game review and a special Kickstarter review. And today, very excited to check it out Off the Rails from Rotten Games. This is for two to four players. Age is 12 plus, it'll take about 60 to 90 minutes to play. And in Off the Rails, you're going to play as a goblin down in a mine trying to gather gems but it's not going to be that easy because you're actually going to be building the track as you go through the game other people are also going to be trying to collect those oh so delicious victory points aka gems they're going to be running into you then eventually during the second half of the game there's going to be a chasm and the cave is going to start collapsing and you need to get out with your valuable gems what am i talking about let's open it up and i'll tell you what i think Alrighty then, we're going to take a look at what you're going to get inside of Off the Rails. So before we get started, I do want to mention this is the promotional copy I have in front of me. So take everything you see here with a grain of salt. So in Off the Rails, uh, first and foremost, we get our handy dandy rule booklet. It is eight pages, double-sided, full color, full of pictures, illustrations, examples, and it's pretty well done. It's currently under construction right now, and uh, like I've already got some errata and FAQs are going to add to it. So I expect by the time it gets to you, it should be uh, just about perfect. But for right now, it is pretty well done. So in in Off the Rails, this is a relatively light game in which you are going to be taking your little mine carts and you're going to be trying to pick up all these gems that are going to be spread around the board because you're playing as, you know, goblins and goblins love gems. These gems are going to give you points at the end of the game. Uh, so four points for blue, three points for, yeah, two, one, and then whoever has the most red is also going to get plus five points. So it's a pretty straightforward game scoring wise. Um, so let's take a look at the components and then we'll get into the gameplay. So first you're going to have your board. It's going to look like this. It's going to be broken up into four different quadrants. You'll have yellow over here, red over here, green, blue. And this is where you are going to be launching off your minecarts and also where you're going to be taking your minecarts back so you can collect the gems to put them into your stockpile of gems. But... This game has two very distinct halves to it, because as you first start the game, you're going to be drawing these cards, and you're going to be placing more and more and more and more gems in this vicinity right here. However, you're going to eventually get to a certain point in this game where you hit this card right here, the Chasm card, and at this point, oh, you're going to take one more turn, take one more turn, and then slowly but surely the mine is going to start to collapse and so it become, then becomes like kind of a push your luck kind of aspect where you're trying to get as many gems as you can and get out safely before you collapse in with the mine and you lose your mine card and you lose precious victory points. So back to the components though, everyone's going to get two of these little mine cards right here. You're also going to get two dice, one white die, one black die. These are going to help you uh, recognize which mine card is which and where you're going to be putting your treasure because you're only allowed to carry five gems at a time. You're going to get a bunch of these cards right here and these cards are going to look like this and they're very self-explanatory. Uh, how this works is if you drew this card, you are going to spawn three gems on the seven blue, which would be right Right there seven blue so seven yellow would be right here seven green would be right there so on and so forth so those are going to be all those cards they range uh, on how many gems you're gonna get with two or three gems on a spot that's pretty much all you're going to do. Let's go ahead and show you exactly how the game works. So when you first start the game, I will say you're going to do this annoying thing where you're going to be making, I think it's like eight different piles, and they have to make sure that the piles are just right. Then you're going to take out a pile and put a chasm card in a pile, and you can take out extra piles if you want to do that. You're going to put one pile up here, and it's, it's annoying, but it is a necessary evil to the game. But once you get started on your turn, you're going to take turns taking turns, and everyone's going to do four actions on their turn. So let's just talk about the actions because the actions are very straightforward in this game. So the first thing you can do is you can place a track tile. And here are the track tiles up here. There's three, uh, actually four kinds of track tiles you're gonna see. You're gonna see straight track tiles, which I just dropped. You're gonna see straight track tiles like this. That's dog hair, gross. You're going to see curved track tiles like that. You're going to see what are called T-tiles, which will allow you to go left, right, or just straight like that. And then you're going to have the four-way tiles, which are the nicest, but you're going to have to upgrade to get them. So placing a track tile is really quite simple. You can place it wherever you want on the map. It doesn't have to be connected to anything in particular. But obviously, at the beginning of the game, you probably want to put it close to yourself. So I might go ahead and put it... Bloop, just right there, and then I might, for my second action, do this right here, and then I might do, I don't know, 
that right there. So that would be three actions right there, three of the four actions that I'd like to do. For my fourth action, because as I said, you get four actions on your turn, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just going to place a minecart right here. When you first place it down, it's going to start with a three die in there. So it's gonna be put on face die three, which means that is the speed that you will be able to go because you can modify the speed, but I'll talk about that in a second. So I'd place it right there and bada boom, that's the end of my action. So next we go down here and everyone actually has their own little area here, actually two people do, but that is going to be everybody, where they can see the actions they take. So next we move the minecart. So if I had two minecarts, both of them would move in whichever order I choose, but they're going to move this many spaces. So mine would go one, two, three, just like that. Next, you're going to generate deposits, which just means you're going to draw one of these cards over here and you're going to place jewels. So for this one, we look at eight green and they are going to get three gems randomly picked out of this bag right here which doesn't really help us too much since we're curved this way but there you go that's actually a really good gem deposit over here so this is a good time to talk about the gems in the game so we talked a little bit about how blue or four yellow or three green two one but there also are what are called rocks and the rocks are the black ones that you're going to see out here and unfortunately when you pick things up you have to pick up rocks first which adds this really unique aspect to the game where it's like yeah i want to go over that but at the same time uh, i don't want the rock and so it's just a little interesting quirk in the game we'll talk more about that in the pros and cons so let's say it gets back to my turn, you know, this person did something over here, they built mines or they built track, you know, obviously that's the sort of thing you do in the game, uh, and they go like this. So now it gets back to me, so let's talk about the other actions I can take. So first, the next thing I can do is I can upgrade a track tile. So as long as I am not on a space, I can upgrade a track tile. So if I wanted, I could say, you know what, I'm going to upgrade this straight one to a T. So you can upgrade them from a straight or a curve to a T and then from a T all the way to a four-way, as I talked a little bit about earlier, like that. So that probably isn't the smartest move, but for showing you how the game is played, that is the move that I'm going to make right there. Next thing you can do is that you can change your speed. So you can go plus one, and that'll cost you an action. Minus one, that will cost you an action. So you could go potentially from three speed to six speed on a turn, but it's going to cost you three of your actions. But obviously right now, the main thing I'd want to do is I'd want to make sure that I have mine cards in front of me. So boom and boom and boom so that was would be my four actions right there now how do you pick up the gems you might be asking well that's a great question so now we do the movement and when you move you go one two three and since i landed right here i get to take two of the gems that are on the spot having to take rocks first now normally when you just go over something so let's pretend there's track here and i went one two three four um then i would just pick up two of these that I want. So I'd pick up the white one and the green one. The white ones are actually blue in the prototype. And then I go ahead and I don't put them into my stockpile. I put them right over here into my little trough because you can lose gems. What can happen is you can have collisions and derailments. So for instance, uh, if someone hits you or if you hit someone uh, and you have nothing in there, so you never want to hit anybody for sure if you don't have any, anything in there. Also, if you hit people head on, you both change directions. So there's lots of interesting aspects there, especially once the board gets more crowded if you're playing four players, where running into people can definitely be uh, uh, something you would actually want to do in this game. But eventually what's going to happen is you're going to hit that Chasm card, at which point you are going to take all, take one more turn and then you're going to draw these four cards up here and this is going to cause uh, chasms to start happening so in this instance instead of putting gems out at you know uh, th yellow three which is right here you would actually place this token right here which means it has collapsed and what can happen is collapses can hit spots like this which means that track is now gone and those gems are now gone or collapses can hit spots like do, 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 where is it um, like this, where phew, mines can be collapsed and everybody loses their gems on that spot. So once you get to the chasm phase, what's going to happen is instead of drawing the cards, you're going to start drawing tokens, drawing these uh, these tokens out of face down area. And then you get to put them anywhere orthogonally next to another one of that symbol. So for instance, if this is what we have right here, I could place this one here, I could place it here, 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 here. As long as I'm connected to another red spot, I could do it. So let's just say, you know what, I don't want anybody over here getting this yellow and red gems. Boom, 
now that spot is out of the game. But eventually what's going to happen is you're going to get to the point where there's either no mines left on the track or you've run completely out of these guys, at which point you will score the game. You're going to look at how many gems you have, remembering that whoever has the most rubies is going to get five points. You're also going to take a look to see uh, if you have your mine cards still, because your mine cards can get destroyed during the chasm. If you still have those, those will score you three points a pop. There also is another alternate variant you can play with the game. The more experienced players will use, and these are the mission cards, and I really like the mission cards. These will be face-up things that you can potentially achieve, and if you achieve them, you'll score the points in the upper right-hand corner. Definitely spices up the game but i'll talk about more about that a little bit later but that in a nutshell is what you're gonna be doing inside of off the rails all right then off the rails from riding games what are my final thoughts let's go over the pros let's go over the cons first on the con side games not gonna be for everybody for a variety of different reasons two to four players aren't very restricted player count and i also liked it best at three and four players there was just more player interaction more people hitting each other uh more spots to traverse on the board and I just liked it best at the higher player counts. Specifically, I think it plays best at four, but I liked it at three, and it's not bad at two. Another thing that I did want to mention on the con side is that once you play with the mission cards, you will never not play with the mission cards. The mission cards are great, and honestly, if you played games before, then I think you should just go straight with the mission cards. I think they make the game better. Uh, so that is something that I did want to mention. Now, another comment I have with this game is that it is too long. It definitely outstays its welcome. 60 to 90 minutes for a family weight game like this is just a little bit too lengthy in my personal opinion. Now, they do have different variants in there where you can take out, like, I think it's three sets of cards, which I think is a fantastic idea because when you play it, the full game, especially at four players, it just goes way too long, which is another con that I have with this game, is that this is a family weight game. While there, uh, there is definitely some strategy to this game, and I like this game, I'm going to tell you that I recommend this game, this is not a meaty, deep, thinky game. So if you're looking for something like that, this is probably not going to be for you. Any other cons I have with the game? Oh, the setup at the beginning of the game is super freaking annoying. I hate doing that. It's like, oh, you need to get eight sets of cards right here, then you need to make sure that this is here, then you put the Chasm card in here, and then if you want to play with a shorter game, you do this, but then you need to take this pile and put it right here. And it's, it's just annoying. I understand it's a necessary evil, but it is something that I wanted to whine about. And I used the word whine there because I felt like that was uh, well, that's what I was doing. Any other cons that I have with the game? It's light, it's simple, it's family weight, two to four players. That's about all I got. Moving on to the pros, I enjoy it off the roads. I think it's a fun game, and I like it. And I think if you're in the market for a family weight game, I definitely think this is one you may enjoy. So what did I like about the game? So first and foremost, it's a neat concept. And to me, it felt a little bit like a gamery version of Suro. Now, I know Suro already itself is a hobby game, but let's be honest, that is a gateway game. This is not a gateway game. I definitely think that it's close. I think it's like a gateway plus game, especially if you're not using the mission cards, but this just had a little bit more meat on the bones and it fleshed it out and I like that. I also really like the artwork and components even in the early version of the game. I thought it was really cool how the tiles are double-sided and uh, I, I liked a lot about this game just in the prototype stuff. So I'm assuming when the game gets to you, it's going to be even nicer. Another pro that I had with this game was the graphic design. It's it's very clean. It looks like a clean game. I love the fact that all the actions are on the corner of the boards, which is great. Just everything about this game looks polished and refined, even in its prototype edition, which is always a good thing. The last thing I really liked about this game was how the first half of the game and the second half of the game feel like two very distinctly different games. With so the first half of the game, it's like, all right, I'm going to be going around the board, I'm going to try and land here, and I'm going to be modifying speed so I can do this and do that, get both my mind cards out here, and woo, pick this up and pick that up, and flying all around trying to get all those gems, and then boom, the chasm hits, and it's completely different. It's like, oh my gosh, I could be dead at any second i actually want to start using the outside of the board because other people are going to try and hit my mine cart because maybe i have a lot of gems in here and i like that aspect a lot i also like the the fact that your gems are private knowledge and that's really cool because it creates this great sense of tension you're like you know he did pick up quite a few green gems over here and he has a couple of yellows and he's had some blues i'm not quite sure who's in first place so you're not sure who to pick on at the end of the game and i like that aspect as well so in the end off the rails i think it's a great light simple family game a gateway plus game that i can easily recommend if you're in the market for a two to four player gateway plus game if you're not then obviously you're going to want to look elsewhere but if you are definitely might want to check this one out if you enjoyed this review, please sure to click on that subscribe button down below or in the comments below. Let me know how much would you have to get paid a year to be a miner. Down in the mines, 
you know, breathing in all that bad stuff that's going to inevitably make you die and way too early, unfortunately. For me personally, uh, I'm going by this. I'm going by the fact that if someone offered me the job right now, like how much would I do it for right now? And I would say two hundred thousand dollars. I would do it for two hundred thousand dollars, and I would work seven years, and I would retire after seven years, and hopefully that would not have too long of an impact on my life. I think one point four million dollars. That would be more than enough for me to retire on and start doing something else part-time and then doing board gaming full-time. Below it in the comments below. If you were going to be a miner, how much would they have to pay you to do it? And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube.